creepiness fills the air, you probably start thinking about all things spooky and frightful. It's finally time to plan Halloween decor. But in my world, Halloween planning happens all year long. I live, eat, and breathe the holidays. Okay, that may be extreme, but as editor of a portfolio of holiday magazines, Halloween and Christmas are on my mind. Nicole, I deeply relate to you. Although I don't I don't have a job related to this. I just love it. <laughs> okay, the next page here. This I believe is an ad. It's like a special partner section. And they did this last year too. It's basically um advertising for Places in the Midwest region of America that have scenic views and good, like tourism places. Oh, yes, okay. This, this, <laughs> this is for me. So, this is a really fun page spread. It says, Vintage spirit. Eerily charming, spooky, and fun. Vintage inspired Halloween decor summons the icons of Halloween's past. These products haunt your home with playfulness. Love, love all of these. We're seeing lots of black hats featured, which are my absolute. So what are all of these things? Let's see. Let's see. A. Skeleton dance. Digitally enhanced cutouts revive this vintage, vintage inspired garland while keeping its old festive character. <laughs> so this is just like a vintage inspired or style Halloween dancing skeleton garland. B. Is over here. So this is oh, Joanna Parker's Halloween pumpkin plates. I have a couple of items by Joanna Parker. Very wonderful Halloween artist. C. Character balls. These charming party favors each hide a temporary friendship bracelet. Ooh, two temporary tattoos. A joke. And a black shoe party out. Also, they're like, um, crackers, like, you know, almost like Christmas crackers, but they're a little ball. I've never seen that before. And this right here says, Cat's Meow. It's bewitching green eyes and sly smile. Give this cat bucket undeniable vintage character. Vintage style happy. I definitely, like, would buy this if I saw this in the store. I probably have, like, five different decorations that feature just a black cat's face, but hey, what can I say? I love black cats. Alright, oh, we get even more. I love this, yes. I'm already loving this year's magazine. Okay, okay, there's more. So this says, Signs are the perfect touch for any shelf, tiered tray, or dining table. Vintage style wood Halloween signs. Oh, this is from Etsy. That's a really cute little ghost. I like that. These medallion medley. That's this one. Halloween party paper rosettes. That's really cute too. See. A little pouch and round case, also by Joanna Parker, so obviously uh, very prestigious in this magazine. D is these guys, the bottom. Chart toppers, and these are little like cupcake kit toppers. Over here on this page, we have 
of accordion players. So these are like little um, accordion decorations. Pretty cute. I like these guys. I like totally had these as a kid. Like not these exact ones. But I think we had a witch. These are like vintage style napkins and then they're little, um, they kind of look like Christmas tree ornaments, but they're just little Halloween ornaments. Now, I know some of you do Halloween trees, kind of like a Christmas tree, but Halloween. I haven't done that yet. I wonder if I will eventually. I think they're a cool. never been so tempting with these playful ballads. Spectacular elements take your party to the next level. This is really chic and cool. I love the little addition of the skeleton hand. It's just, it's kind of subtle. I think that it owes that to being like a more realistic skeleton hand. It's not like a, you know, when you see a plastic skeleton it looks like, well, they all look fake, but there is like a scale of fakeness where like, it's like super, super campy, and then it goes all the way to like, not realistic, but attempting to do realistic things, right? I would say this is a little more along the lines of like trying to be realistic, but I guess you could do it in like a silly way too. It's like a very, <laughs> I wanted to say mature, but I always jokingly say mature, <laughs> because I'm immature. This is a very mature sort of layout here. You've got some lovely little cream colored pumpkins. Oh, is that a black cat? Like a real black cat? I think so. Oh. I love when they feature in these magazines. My heart. This is, this is very cool. I feel like this is much more elegant than I am, but I, it's nice to aspire <laughs> to be that cool. Okay, this is a little more uh, achievable, I guess, for me. This is a little more kitschy. It's a uh, what you really want. When I, when my guests come over, I want them to feel intrigued. I want them to walk around and say, wow, these decorations uh, are very intriguing. I feel a level of intrigue has gone into this party. Like a James Bond. This is like a James Bond level of intrigue. Okay, I'll stop. I'm just having too much fun. But this garland is willing to bet dollars to donuts that that is an actual vintage um, pumpkin bucket. Let's take a look here. Is there any information? Uh, opposite, top left. Making use of her room's existing furnishings and colors opposite, top left, can help create cohesion and complexity. Okay, Oh. 
thousand books invoke subtle suspense. Corn husks frame the table and rustle in any cool autumn breeze. Browns and golds and pumpkins galore advance elegance in an otherwise eerie setting. Yeah, I, I love this. Again, I don't know if I have the skills to create something like this, but if I walked into somebody's house and they had super cool little thistles in a display. I gotta say, I would be impressed. And I love the little ravens. That's something I feel that my Halloween decor is vastly missing, is ravens. I need to correct that because I love crows. I really do. Okay, this is like, um, there's always a section like this in the magazine. Or are we do a kid's party, of course. So this year's section says, A spooky, sweet, social. Stephanie Hanna goes all out for her daughters and their friends to enjoy a frightfully fun, but not scary, afternoon celebrating the season. This is very, like, rainbowish, isn't it? This archway is really beautiful. I love all the pastels and pinks with the little bats. So cute. I love the way pink Halloween stuff looks in photos and like in other people's setups. I really love it, but for myself, I love traditional Halloween colors like um, a sort of dark reddish orange and black and candy corn yellow. People always assume that I will want to do pink for Halloween, and I think that that is a fair assumption, because, I mean, look at me. But, uh, I don't know. I like traditional Halloween colors. It's my one time of the year where I do, like, more of a dark aesthetic, so I have to A really cute setup. I love this sort of balance between there's like pinks and creams in this like balloon display, but it all kind of feels sort of grounded because of this black and white carpet at the bottom here, and then this like pink pumpkin is like a, it's a sort of a vase, isn't it? It's got little flowers and little stack of pumpkins in the back here. This is totally adorable for a kid's party. I love the colors. Oh, look at this. Okay, this cake. I feel that we saw something similar like this, like a ghost um, icing cake where they just sort of do little blops of icing on the cake for little ghosts last year. We not? Am I remembering that right? Like, wasn't it on the cover? I could be totally making that up, but it says Stephanie ordered a cake. This photo with icing ghosts and stars. She added the topper and put the party ready confection on a pedestal. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I love that this magazine's like, yeah, I mean, and she just ordered it. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes you gotta just say, I can't make a cake. And I gotta be real with you. I would be this lady. I'd be like, I can't make a cake. <laughs> I'll do the other stuff, but I'm not making the cake. And this is like a sort of, I want to say it's like a charcuterie board with all sweets. Looks like it. There's like sugar cookies and macarons and little meringues. Ghosts and skulls and Colors are really cute. And then lots of cute decor ideas. There's like little ideas for party ideas and things like that, like activities. And a cute little countdown to Halloween calendar. I have not done that yet. I usually do advent calendars. 
I'm sure there's gotta be some brands making like Halloween advent calendars now, right? There's gotta be. Okay, pumpkins. It's pumpkin time. These are gonna be considered into consideration for our best pumpkin and pumpkin. Creepers, the word they get those peepers from your craft stash, of course. <laughs> Goofy eyes, paint, and familiar accents make these silly monsters and eerie characters so easy to create. They've painted these pumpkins and put googly eyes on them. Oh, look at this guy. Okay, I need to. Please let me know. Do we think that this guy is a monster or an alien? Now, I mean, yes, an alien could be considered a monster. But what I mean is like, you know, the kind of monsters that are in like Monsters, Inc. Do we think that this is that? Or do we think that's an alien? It does not. Learning pumpkin lingo helps when sharing the secrets to creating this giddy character above. It's just, this is just a giddy character to them. I don't know. To me... Uh, I don't know why, but he's giving me sort of an alien vibe. Except, also, he's a clown. I, I don't know. This page is more pumpkin ideas, and this is all using it looks like foam pumpkins and beads. So it looks like they're carving into these foam pumpkins, but not like going all the way through. Just enough to make an indentation, and then filling that part with glue, and then sticking beads in it. Hold pumpkins over a shallow box or lid while applying beads so the excess falls in and can be reused. Once I shake beads inside the design lines and it dries, I add more beads to void areas. It's kind of like a Y2K looking design, don't you think? Something about the colors, like the multicoloredness of it, and then I like this, but maybe some of you guys will, I don't know. I don't know, it's not my favorite, but it is cool to see them doing so many different things year after year. I haven't seen them do something like that before. Okay, start basic, go wild, get a ghoulish gaze by outlining the iris with black and filling in with strokes of blue and green. So this one says, Big baby blues, all eyes are on you when you cut out one or both of these piercing beauties. It's clear to see why these eyeballs are haunting when you make the openings and irises oversize with no other facial features in sight. Hollow out the pumpkin for a double vision design. Being careful to leave the outlines of the irises in place. These are kind of spooky. I feel like they're all looking at me. It's like a painting where, you know, <laughs> like in Scooby-Doo, where it, it's like a, I wanted to say real, when the real person behind the painting, when Shaggy or Scooby have their little eyes behind, and you're walking by, I had a big house, <laughs> and perhaps it would be haunted in this situation, this hypothetical. I would have paintings that have eye cut out so I could watch and be like, oh, who's taking two candy bars when the bull says just take one? <clears throat> I don't know what my plan is after that, just to, just to know that. Okay, that's 
ranking among the creepiest ever. This design is so easy to create. Simply drill holes randomly and weave rubber snakes in and out. Doesn't really like creep me out or scare me, but I feel like this would not feel look it wouldn't look very good in practical application. Everything looks beautiful when it's photographed in this gorgeous way, but I think if you just add this on your front step, it would look kind I don't know. I, I just don't like it. <laughs> but now this one over here, this I can get into. So they did like um, a stitch along the top of the pumpkin to kind of give it like um, a Frankenstein effect. And I love You know, maybe I just like traditional pumpkins at the end of the day. That could be it. They did a sort of similar thing over here that says, Call the exterminator. You'll find these rats and mice even scarier than the snakes. Halloween staples. Rubber rodents are easy to find during the season. Clean out a pumpkin and carve a smiling face using her pattern. And then they've got the little, like, rubber rats. This, this is like a little better to me than the snakes because in my head all of these little guys are just friends of Remy the rat and they're emptying out this pumpkin because they're gonna make pumpkin pie obviously <laughs> as we all know every little rat is a chef <laughs> this is just instructions for any of the crops because they really do want is very nice. So, it looks like this spread is all featuring outside decor. So it says in Chanted Forest F O R E S I'm shocked at how much I'm finding myself really loving <laughs> the way this looks. It says, witches park their brooms and the porch becomes a mystical woodland. Mushrooms sprout amongst the shrubs and an oversized owl watches the festivities. I would normally not think this is my jam. really works because the house that they chose, it's like all neutral colors, mostly black, so like the hanging moss, the little foam mushrooms, like I really love that owl above the door. We've got some nice close-up photos, that's good, okay. So this one says, room for all filled planters and containers with arrangements of dried and live materials. Craft stores offer huge variety, many dyed and vibrant full colors, like the orange stalks in this photo I see. That's really cute. And there's like a little, a little toad down here at the bottom. Okay, let's look at this. I'm, I'm into this. So, this is like an owl that's made to look like it's holding this broom. There's like moss and stuff. It's all very natural looking. It's like very swampy in a fun way. It says winging it. It might be a wild ride for this incoming owl above. If he's going to land by nightfall. Well, we don't want to ride. His makeup is as simple as assembling a, a section of hula hoop toy and a milk jug to form a bulky body and uplifted wing. Coconut fiber fabric, usually called core. I've never seen that word before. <laughs> core. 
covers the milk jug body. Vinyl and synthetic fabrics serve these oversized feathers. That is so fun. I want to make that. I would never in a million years have come up with that. That's why I love this magazine. We've got more little sort of broomstick and gourd displays. This says, make your home memorable. There to be different with unexpected displays. Draw upon imaginative ideas from designers and tweak them up to be your own. Every good witch needs a break now and then. A black hat perched on a porch swing and pointy toe buckle shoes under it suggest that the resident witch might not be far away. A few well-chosen treats on the tray might say she won't be away long wherever she's lurking. I could do this if, if, if I felt inclined because I have a witch app. And I do have some little shoes that kind of look like witch boots. Very interesting. And then we've got like the instructions. Oh, this is great. This is very helpful. So take a look at they've done like a little illustration to sort of help us visualize what the owl looks like underneath the decor part so you can really picture the like hula hoop cut in half and the milk jug very clever all right it's costume time Stores and paint are your friends. Hey, listen. Thrift stores and paint are my friend every time of year. Be whatever you dream to be. Astronaut, shark, flower, clown. You have four options in this life, okay, everybody? You can be an astronaut, shark, a flower, or a clown. I hope, I hope that's okay for you because those are your choices. So this is like a little space-themed family costume idea. This little kid's an astronaut. This little kid's a star. And then I guess this lady's like a constellation. If it were me, I'd want to be the astronaut. <laughs> that seems like the most fun costume. Oh, this is cute. So here we have. little baby is a flower. <laughs> They're so cute. They're like, how did I get into this? Who signed me up to do this? My goodness. And we've got this lovely little like green leafy look to go with it. Oh, heck yeah. Okay, this is more my speed. Undersea. Assuming, like, mom <laughs> is the idea, as a beautiful mermaid. Is this kid uh, also in a scuba diving outfit? Wait, wasn't this the same child who was an astronaut? No, it might be a different kid. I might just be like, oh, <laughs> the middle height child is wearing a very similar outfit. I could just look at the caption, but it has got the time for that. I love this kid. This shark kid. That would be what I would choose. Absolutely. I kind of love the color scheme happening here. I feel like that would be the hardest part of a costume like this. Would be making sure that all of these turquoises are the same color turquoise, you know. I guess spray paint really helps with this. Oh my gosh, these, these guys are so cute. The big top presents clowning around. Join the Fright Night Circus parading around your neighborhood and make everyone smile. This family is so cute. Like, I'm just smiling looking at them. Their smiles are just infectious. 
this is my favorite costume so far. This like little clown family is just adorable. I also feel like it's just like the most fun that the kid looks like he's having so much fun. Oh, adorable. All right, a magical makeover. La, la, la. This is what I always think about. I always wonder, what time of year did they shoot these photos? The reason I wonder is because, like, I, I kind of know how this works. Like, sometimes magazine stuff for holidays, they'll shoot it the year before. But I feel like sometimes they're just taking these photos in July. Especially in a photo like this where, like, everything's very green and it kind of looks like they very specifically placed like a small handful of very orange and yellow leaves to be like um, it's fall, it's definitely fall, it's not spring so don't even think about that and look it totally works for this photo but I, I guess from the behind the scenes perspective I'm always thinking when I look at these like when was this shot? Was this shot recently? Was this shot last year? I'm just wondering. In fact, I recently walked by a set where they were filming uh, Christmas content out in the wild. I spotted them. I definitely will show you in a future vlog seeing that because um, it was kind of cool, but like it made me be like, oh, it's it's early. It's not Christmas and there's fake snow on the ground. It's funny when you think about it, but that's the way they gotta do it, right? I totally understand. It's just a little bit of movie magic for us. So this is a really cute outdoor display. It's kind of rustic. We've got some little witch hats on the table. This feels like, even though to me it's not the most beautiful, on display. I would want to go here. Like, this feels like a real friends hangout situation. And that makes me a little inspired. This is all very, like, farmhouse style. And they've got a lovely little buffet set up with, like, it looks like this is an apple cider dispenser. Gosh, I can't wait for apple cider. I always get some from there's a farm that's not too far from me. And they have really nice fresh apple cider, so I always yearly go pick some up. And we've got a big jumbo spider on the outside of the house here. I like a jumbo spider. It's the exact level of tackiness that is yummy to me. It says spooktacular music. In the 1920s, black stained piano might be a fabulous prop in this well haunted house. It plays a part in the couple's everyday life. Tanner often plays favorite jazz pieces on the piano, sans cobwebs and skulls. An antique clip nailed to a window holds a new print made to look old. Oh, I like that. Just taking like a Ghosts 
and jack-o'-lanterns with the black features and add seasonal fun among the sleek silhouettes and collected dishware. Oh, there's a skeleton hand. But don't get scared. It's not real, okay? Alright. Reborn decor. Boost. B-O-O-S-T. Boost. Your fear factor by resurrecting old these scary good upgrades rely on upcycled vines. Okay, so here they're making bats with coffee filters and wooden beads. That's really nifty and very inexpensive, so that's a good craft to do on a budget. And then over here, we've got coffee filters and paper bags to make this really cute web garland. I'm really into garland uh, for all holidays, especially like a little bunting. Oh, I love it. And then on this page, we're using coffee filters and cotton cord. Oh, cord. <laughs> that makes more sense. I was like, what is a cotton cord? We've already got Pretty the colors. I wonder how they did that. Beautiful cords. Okay, this does say cords at the top. So clearly, clearly my brain didn't just pull that out of thin air. Let this idea percolate. Bring this colorful patch of pumpkins to life with the coffee filters and a vibrant green and orange dye. Fold, glue, and stack. Oh, got a stack. A filter so it ends up being like an accordion. I, I get it now. This one is made with paper rolls and cardboard. So you do cardboard for this little candle holder and then you use like paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls for the candles. And then it looks like they just have those little Operated to stick in the top there. I love the like droopy wax look of it. I prefer a real candle, but like I think especially if you have like a bunch of little kids running around, it can be safer to have these like faux tea lights. So I get the appeal for sure. Cardboard shipping box is what they're using to make this cute little... It says eerie real estate. I guess it's not really a haunted house necessarily. It's just a house. What's the difference between a haunted house and just a house? I guess just little ghosts, little chests. Does that mean my house is haunted if I have chests? Hmm. And then over here, wooden beads and piping cord are what's used to make this little spooky serpent garland. And then here we have like all the detailed instructions and techniques. There's lots of very reasonably like simple crafts in this section, so I appreciate I like having a craft day with friends. It's fun. Oh, yes. I need this. I need this section. This is all food and drinks. Spellbinding spreads. Layout. Treat trays with colors of the season. Black for midnight haunts. White for spooks. Orange for jack-o'-lanterns. And green for ghouls. Shadowland, that's the section. If you can see it okay, the colors are very dark. It's like a little themed cookie tray where a lot of the cookies are black tinted or just brownies. These bats are brownies. Then over here, oh, I want to drink this. Stout and Stormy Night. That sounds delicious. I hope 
we get some non-sweet treats? Because I want to do some savory food for my party. Friendly ghosts. These sweet specters will generate delight instead of fright. Making them is splendidly simple. Much of this dessert tray over here is fix-ups of light tone cookies such as madeleines, meringues, and rolled wafers. Oh, these little crunchy pretzel guys look yummy. And then, this is like, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, maybe more than that, but a bunch of cupcakes that then they have iced all this, like one thing. Our drink on this page is Boolicious. Doesn't sound good to me. Do you guys like a nog? It says canned milks and cream of coconut are the trick to this deliciously easy and creamy nog. Make a picture to serve. Hmm. Interesting. Drink it in Jack O Citrus Granita. Yeah, that's more my vibe. This whole page is Colors of the harvest. Shades of orange are seen in gardens and farmers markets this time of year. In pumpkins, squash, and the last of the season's summer bell peppers. Edibles with bright or rusty tones give this savory tray opposite variety and texture. Achieve the look in effortless ways with round and orange orange hues serving both ceramic and edible. Oh yeah, I want to eat all of this. Look for a small round loaf of bread, the kind used for bread bowls, and hollow it out to hold a creamy dip. Oh, don't mind if I do. I, I want to eat all of this. Let me add this plate with all the cheesy dips. Delicious. Also, I love this drink orange slice. I need to get some oranges, I think. I love that idea. Ooh, ghastly greens. Now, what do we have here? It says, drink it in. Green Monster Smash. That's the name of this drink. This fresh drink is not for the faint of heart. Shave a cucumber lengthwise with a vegetable peeler and inside glasses. That sounds nice. I like a, I like a drink with fresh cucumber. And there's all kind of veggie stuff on this plate. Little snap peas it looks like and more cucumbers. And these kind of look like little wrapped mummies. Uh, fingerling potatoes live up to their name with a film of pesto and garnish among sliced almond fingers. That's what these are. Oh, mm. I would stick with these little mummies. That's that's much cuter to me. And then lots of yummy recipes. These are what's going to be so useful for me, especially like the stout and stormy night. Sounds very very nice. Blackberry spider prints. Blackout cutouts. I need to go through all of my magazines because I keep these, by the way, year to year. Don't ask me why. But I feel like combined there will be so many good drinks and like drink recipes to look at. Okay, I am not freaking out, but uh, I love them. This is so my vibe. I'm loving it. Winsome Trio. One mantle, three beams. Oh, I see. So they're gonna... Oh, there's a real little kitty cat. <laughs> Look at him. I wish I could just give him a little smooch around the head. What a good baby. Okay. Hocus pocus. 
focus, it's time to focus on your mantle. Choose your look and shift this focal point feature into a magical attraction. Wooden bead garlands draped below the mantle attached to self-adhesive books. One of Suzanne Sterling's easy on, easy off decorating essentials. <laughs> I love it. This is so... I love it. So retro, so cute. It says, Magical thinking. The vintage-inspired display opposites. So that's this page. It's full of tricks and treats, starting with candles that adorn the wreath. Decorative tapes make a quick pattern play on some pumpkins. Oh, they did decorative tapes on these. Interesting. While others masquerade as a skeleton, black cat, and jack-o'-lantern. So that's, that's these little guys down here. <laughs> I love that. It's just like a little mask on top. It would be really easy to reuse year to year. Oh, I don't want to turn the page. He's so cute. Oh, so it's the same. Look at this same mantle. This display is called Over the Moon, a Moonlight Serenade. You know, I love this. I gotta say, I think it's totally a vibe. The purples, like with the black and white. And I kind of love this moon. Maybe I love it because I love these little raven guys, but I think the little black branches add like a really nice really pretty. I really like in these magazines when they do multiple looks in the same space because sometimes when you see the decor you're like, well, of course the decor looks good because you have like a beautiful big fancy house so pretty much everything you do there looks good. You know what I mean? But then when they do different decor on the one same space, it kind of just feels a little more achievable. Like, I look at this and I'm like, okay, so I can take what I like about this and maybe bring it to my own space. Kind of like a blank slate thing, I don't know. Do you guys like when they do that? And then here's another look on the same mantle. I don't know that this one is for me, but that's okay. It says farmhouse for uh, recruit extra hands to help arrange the unwieldy grapevine into a pleasing arch. Small nails, putty, and wire keep it in place. I see. It is a pretty grapevine. This owl, though, I don't love it. <laughs> He's seen something, this owl. They put these little, like, soft pumpkins on him, like a dad look like eyes, and he's just like, whoa. Kind of like how they did the yarn around the pumpkins to make them, like, plaid. It's interesting. I haven't seen somebody do that before. And we've got instructions for all of these. How to make the little cardboard candles. Again, I think this is amazing and great can't have candles for safety reasons, and there's like a hundred different reasons you couldn't. So I think it's good. But if you like this kind of vintage candlestick holder, go to your local antique mall. I, I've bought like a couple there, and they're like five bucks each. It's very easy to find them. Okay, this says Batty for homeowner charms with festive passion. The eerily stylish result is like decor witchcraft. Okay, so we've got like a very simple style Halloween decorating, but I can appreciate that. This little kid is so cute with the little back costume. I mean, all I see when I look at this is like, wow, that's a beautiful house with a gorgeous wood. Like, I barely noticed the Halloween decorations. 
decorating because it's just a gorgeous house. But this I like. It's simple, you know. It's a gorgeous fireplace. So really, you don't need to do all that much to it. You just got a little couple of pumpkins and in the next 